Hi guys and girls, John here. In this video, we're going to take a look at piston air compressors. We'll have a brief look at all of the parts. I'll show you exactly how it works. We'll have a look at some different designs and we'll discuss some typical applications for each design of compressor. Before we get too far into the video, let's just have a think about what air compressors do and why. Air compressors compress air. That might be fairly obvious, but I've got to say that at least right at the start of the video. We're compressing air because we have a particular purpose that we would like to use that air for. We may compress air because we need to use it to power hand tools. You'll often see pneumatic hand tools in workshops, on building sites, in engine rooms, in industrial plants, and things like that. The hand tools might be used for things like grinding, wire brushing, or for undoing nuts and bolts, although there are many other applications for which you can use pneumatic tools. If we're using compressed air for hand tools, we'll often call that compressed air system the service air system, and it will operate at around 6 bar, maybe 7 bar, which is about 90 psi. We might use compressed air for things like starting an engine. Many medium and large sized internal combustion engines are rotated initially by compressed air. Once they're rotating, once they're in motion, then fuel can be injected, we get combustion, and these engines then can maintain their speed or increase their speed using the chemical energy that we release when we get combustion. So service air and starting air for combustion engines are typical uses of compressed air. And those two types of system, service air and starting air, are both classified as compressed air systems. There are different types of air compressor available, and these are split into linear or reciprocating compressors and rotary compressors. In this video, we're going to talk about piston compressors, but keep in mind you may also have a screw compressor, a vein compressor, a diaphragm compressor, it depends upon the type of application. Different compressor designs have different advantages and disadvantages. And that's the reason we have so many different variations of air compressor. So let's get started now by talking about a piston air compressor or a reciprocating piston air compressor to give it its full name. Here is a piston air compressor. Typically when you're walking around in the workshop or in the industrial plant or wherever you may be, you're going to see something that looks a bit like this, depending on the design. And if you were to look inside the compressor, you would see something like this. Air is drawn into the compressor through this air filter. It's got this little blue wing nut on it, and that allows us to unscrew the wing nut and change the air filter quickly and easily. We filter the air going into the air compressor because we don't want to damage our air compressor parts, specifically the internal air compressor parts. The clearances between the piston and the cylinder, which is the item the piston moves up and down within, are very small. Piston rings seal the space between the piston and the cylinder. You can see that in these highlighted areas. Any particles of dirt, grit or sand that should be drawn into the air compressor would thus damage these very fine clearances between the piston rings and the cylinder liner. So for this reason we have an air filter and it will filter out those bits of sand and grit and dirt. Ultimately we're protecting the internal components from damage, not just the piston and the cylinder liner but also the valves which are located at the top of the cylinder. Got a red one and a blue one. These are our suction and discharge valves. These are very basic, they don't actually look like this, but I think showing the valves like this makes it easier to understand exactly what's going on in the compressor, which we'll have a look at in a moment. And it's these valves that we're trying to protect when we filter out the grit, the sand, the dirt, etc. What we refer to as foreign particles from the air coming into the air compressor. Once we've drawn air into the air compressor, you can actually see where the air comes in. It comes in through this hole, there's our air compressor filter. In fact, we can actually just go in there. The filter would be located where this star shape is here. The air comes in and it is then drawn into our cylinder. It's going to be drawn into the cylinder 
through this red valve, this red flap. As I say, these valves are usually slightly more complicated, but let's stick with the basic design for now. So air is drawn in, passes through this space, goes into the cylinder, and once we're inside the cylinder, we're essentially trapped between the cylinder liner and the piston. So I hope you now know how piston compressors work and some of the typical applications for which we might use piston compressors. We looked at using reciprocating piston compressors for air systems, start and service air systems. And then at the end of this video, I showed you an example of where we would use a piston compressor within a refrigeration system. If you like this video, please do like it or share it on social media. We really do appreciate it. If you want to learn more about engineering, then check out some of our online engineering video courses. We've got over 25 hours of video online and we cover all sorts of topics ranging from valves and pumps and boilers to things like electrical transformers, piping flanges and many other interesting and exciting engineering topics. If you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the YouTube channel and I hope to see you on another video soon. Thanks very much for your time.